Hey everyone, on this channel I use the AI to break down complex topics like politics with no bias or emotion. So Donald Trump's mass deportation plan is already underway, and even though some local agencies have said they won't participate, ICE has reported hundreds of deportations so far, about 600 people arrested and nearly 500 detainers lodged. Long story short, it's just happening. Now, as we all know, Trump's announced plans to deport between 15 and 20 million people. But here's one big question. What would happen to the United States if he suddenly decided to keep his promise, went all in and actually made it happen? Here's how I plan to find out. I'm going to ask ChatGPT how mass deportations would affect American families, what it would mean for the economy, groceries, housing, and prices overall, and by the end, AI is going to come up with its own plan on how to tackle the undocumented immigration issue and what it would do in Trump's shoes. But before we get started, make sure that you subscribe to the channel right now if you haven't already and ring that bell for notifications because you don't want to miss out on any of the brand new videos that I publish each and every week. Alright, let's get to the chat. Here we are. Since we need the latest info, I'm going to start by asking it to gather up all the recent news and then we'll get started. Great, now it's ready. So I'm going to ask it to be clear, unbiased, and avoid any left or right leaning takes and all of that. Oh, and by the way, I saw a lot of you asking to show less of Trump's face in the videos. Some of you even suggested showing a black screen instead, and I do get it. I mean, honestly, as I'm working on videos about him every single day, his face and voice are literally showing up in my dreams. So yeah, let's reduce that just a little bit, and I'll show more of ChatGPT's text instead. Let me know in the comments if that works for you. Alright, now let's move on to the first question and ask for a brief recap of what's going on right now and what AI thinks about it, and here's the answer. Mass deportations are underway under President Trump's administration, following a declared national emergency at the U.S.-Mexico border. ICE has ramped up operations, targeting undocumented immigrants with arrests in various locations, including schools and churches. Hundreds have already been deported, with plans for as many as 15 to 20 million removals, though the feasibility of this number is questionable. Deportation flights, even involving military aircraft, are happening, but Mexico recently refused to accept one flight, signaling potential diplomatic tensions. This situation is chaotic, with significant legal, logistical, and social hurdles. My take? This is a logistical and humanitarian mess. Deporting millions of people sounds decisive on paper, but in reality it's near impossible to execute without wrecking families, economies, and communities. Let's not pretend this isn't also about politics. It's a show of force to energize a specific voter base. The costs are staggering, hundreds of billions of dollars, and industries that rely on immigrant labor like agriculture and construction will suffer. The social fallout? Devastating for families, with children born in the U.S. left behind or uprooted. It's not about enforcing law and order. It's a political stunt dressed up as policy. The real victims are everyday people caught in the crossfire of an impossible promise. Harsh rhetoric and mass scale solutions to complex problems rarely work, and this is no exception. Alright, alright, I already imagined the comments about lefty AI, so allow me to try a little experiment. You'd probably agree that tackling the problem of migrants who violate the law or even criminals is a good thing, right? Well, I just want to make sure that ChatGPT isn't only here to criticize Trump's actions, but can also acknowledge some of the good intentions. So let me ask it this. Is it a good idea to deport migrants here illegally or not? Just a quick question to see if it's totally unbiased, and here we go. Trump's intention to deport illegal immigrants who violate the law or are criminals is good. Enforcing immigration laws is important, but the way he's trying to do it with mass deportations is bad. It's unrealistic, harmful to families and the economy, and feels more like political theater than a practical solution. 
All right, got it. The intention is good, but of course, ChatGPT didn't miss the chance to take a jab at Trump. All right, I think we can all agree on that one. Now let's talk about the impact of such moves on the country. Let's imagine that Donald Trump doesn't hold back and goes through with deporting up to 20 million people, no matter what it takes, as he promised. The first thing that comes to mind is labor shortages. So the question then becomes, how will this affect those industries? Or perhaps Trump has a special plan to avoid a collapse. Let's find out the answer. Mass deportations would hit industries like agriculture, construction, and hospitality the hardest, as they rely heavily on undocumented workers for physically demanding lower-wage jobs that many Americans typically avoid. Without these workers, farms could struggle to harvest crops, leading to food shortages and skyrocketing prices. Construction projects might be delayed or canceled, driving up housing costs. Restaurants, hotels, and cleaning services could face massive staff shortages, making everyday services more expensive and less accessible. As for Trump having a special plan to avoid a collapse in these industries, there's no clear evidence of one. Past rhetoric has focused on prioritizing American workers, but that's easier said than done. Even if wages are raised to attract domestic workers, it's unlikely there would be enough people willing to fill the gaps, especially in physically taxing jobs. Training programs or temporary worker visas might help in theory, but implementing these solutions would take years. Time the industries don't have if deportations are ramped up immediately. Without a well-thought-out replacement strategy, this could lead to severe disruptions that ripple through the economy and hit everyday Americans hard. All right, but are we really all that dependent on immigrants? I mean, it almost feels like our lives depend on them. Let's just stick with this topic and ask it to continue. Yes, the U.S. is heavily dependent on immigrants, including undocumented ones, in ways that many people don't fully realize. They're deeply embedded in key sectors of the economy, performing work that keeps everything running smoothly often jobs that Americans aren't lining up to do. This dependency isn't just anecdotal, it's backed by hard numbers and trends. Take agriculture, for example. Undocumented immigrants make up a massive portion of farm labor. If they're gone, crops literally rot in the fields because there aren't enough workers to replace them. When farms pay higher wages to attract U.S.-born workers, food prices spike. The same thing happens in construction where immigrants handle tough, often dangerous jobs deport them, and the cost of homes and infrastructure rises because finding replacements isn't easy or cheap. This isn't just about physical labor. Immigrants also play a significant role in entrepreneurship, with many owning small businesses that create jobs and provide essential services. Losing those contributions would hurt local economies and communities. Does this mean the U.S. would collapse without immigrants? No, but life would get a lot harder and more expensive for everyone. The economy would need massive adjustments, and it would take years to recover. The dependency isn't because Americans can't do these jobs. It's because the system has relied on immigrant labor for decades to fill gaps in affordability, availability, and skill. Disrupting that balance without a clear plan would cause chaos. In short, it feels like our lives depend on immigrants because in many ways they do, especially for things we take for granted like affordable food, housing, and services. All right, understood, but I think it would be more informative to talk about prices in detail. I mean, what exactly will get more expensive and by how much? So now I'm going to ask it to give us clear examples. But before we get into that, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because I regularly upload new videos and you'll definitely find something interesting here every single week. It helps you to stay updated on new content while supporting the channel a whole lot. Another great way to help is by giving this video a thumbs up because it helps me to reach more people, it gets more views, and it keeps the channel growing. In short, if you find the video informative, you can help get it in front of more eyeballs with these very simple actions. Oh, and by the way, I already did a video about mass deportation where ChatGPT breaks down Trump's plans and discusses the impact on immigrants. So to get the full picture, be sure to check that one out after we're done here. All right, thank you so much for the likes and subs, and now let's move on to the next part. 
So then, let's talk about numbers and ask ChatGPT to give us examples of goods and services where prices might increase, and here's the answer. Here are some concrete numbers and examples to illustrate how prices might increase due to mass deportations along with the costs of deportation itself. Agriculture or food prices, labor cost increase. If farms are forced to replace undocumented workers with higher paid American workers, labor costs could rise by 40 to 70 percent according to estimates from the American Farm Bureau Federation. Impact on consumers. This could translate to a 5 to 10 percent increase in grocery bills. For example, a $2 head of lettuce might cost $2.20 or more, and a $3.50 carton of strawberries could jump to $4 or higher. Construction or housing costs, labor supply shrinks, immigrants make up 24 percent of the U.S. construction workforce. If this pool shrinks, builders would need to pay higher wages or face delays. Cost impact, a typical home could cost $15,000 to $30,000 more to build due to increased labor expenses, making new housing less affordable for middle class families. Hospitality and services, restaurant and hotel prices, staff shortages. With undocumented workers filling a large portion of back of house roles, businesses would have to raise wages or cut services. Price increase, restaurant menu prices could rise by 10 to 15 percent. A $15 burger and fries might cost $17 or more. Hotel room rates could increase by 10 to $20 per night. Child care and cleaning services, Household budgets hit. Many families rely on immigrant workers for childcare or housekeeping. Deportations could lead to wage hikes for these roles, increasing costs by 20 to 30 percent. For instance, weekly childcare fees could go from $200 to $250 or more. Cost of deportation operations government spending. Mass deportations on the scale proposed could cost $300 to $400 billion over several years. This includes costs for detaining, processing, and transporting individuals as well as illegal proceedings and enforcement infrastructure. Impact on taxpayers. These costs would likely require reallocating funds from other public programs or increasing taxes, creating an additional financial burden on American families. These numbers show the tangible impact mass deportations could have on everyday expenses and government spending. It's not just abstract economic theory. Families would feel the strain directly in their wallets, and taxpayers would bear a significant share of the overall cost. Damn, that hurts, but I still can't really make sense of it. It just seems like a cartoon villain who wants to do bad things. I mean, why is the plan all that bad? Maybe Trump is unaware of the consequences, or maybe he has a special plan to avoid them or something. Let's just ask ChatGPT why, and here's the answer. I get what you mean. It really does feel over the top, almost like it's designed to cause harm, but Trump isn't unaware of the consequences. He knows how mass deportation on that scale would wreak havoc on the economy, cause labor shortages, and hurt everyday Americans. The thing is, it's not about the actual plan working, it's about the image it creates. He doesn't need to deport 15 to 20 million people, he just needs to show his base that he's trying, that he's tough on immigration. Even if he only does a fraction of it, they'll still see it as a win. But it doesn't mean he doesn't care about the issue. I believe he genuinely feels the U.S. shouldn't be a place for undocumented immigrants and criminals, and he wants to take steps to reduce it. As for a special plan to avoid the consequences, highly unlikely. He's not going to achieve the numbers he promised, so a plan B isn't needed. He's banking on the promise itself being enough to keep his supporters energized, even if the actual results don't fully match the rhetoric. It's more theater than strategy. Got it. It even sounds a little bit reassuring, doesn't it? All right, well, since ChatGPT has been criticizing that plan so far, I'm going to find out what it would do instead. What would AI do in Trump's shoes to tackle the undocumented immigrants issue? Let's find out its plan right now, and here it is.
If I were in Trump's shoes, I'd avoid mass deportation entirely because of the harm it would cause to American families and the economy. Removing millions of workers would disrupt essential industries, leaving businesses scrambling to fill roles and passing the consequences on to consumers. Prices would rise, services would slow, and average Americans would ultimately bear the burden. Instead of uprooting millions of people, I'd focus on a balanced approach. For immigrants already in the U.S., I'd take a smoother path, prioritizing targeted deportations of individuals with serious criminal records while creating a pathway to legal status for those who are contributing productively to the economy. This wouldn't mean citizenship, but a framework allowing them to work legally and stay without fear of deportation. It's a fair and stable solution that supports businesses and communities while ensuring accountability. At the same time, I'd implement stricter rules for new immigration. Borders would need stronger protection, with advanced technology and better resources to reduce illegal crossings. Legal immigration processes should be modernized and streamlined, making it easier for those who follow the law to enter, while preventing future dependence on undocumented labor. I'd also expand and improve guest worker programs, giving industries legal access to the workers they need and enforce stricter penalties on employers who hire undocumented workers. This would encourage compliance with the law and create a more balanced, sustainable system. The plan avoids the chaos of mass deportation and the ripple effects of rising costs and slower services that Americans would inevitably face. It balances strict border control with a practical, humane approach for those already here. Mass deportation might sound bold, but in reality it's disruptive and bad for everyone, especially American families. A smarter, more focused strategy would enforce immigration laws while protecting the stability of the economy and daily life for Americans. Oh, well, that's pretty much how ChatGPT would act if it were Donald Trump, but let me know in the comments below what you think about its plan. Don't forget to leave a like, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, and if you want more AI insights on mass deportation, be sure to click on this video where ChatGPT also shares its take on Trump's actions, gives recommendations to avoid lawlessness, and even writes a personal message to Donald Trump to tell him what it thinks about his plan. Thanks so much for watching, click on this video, and I'll see you there in a moment.